So now, let's get into it, folks. How can we make money week 17 in the NFL? Well, I got you covered, folks, because we've got six official picks here with a seventh bonus trap. Stay away from that that we will talk about. Uh, but here we go. We do six picks every single week, folks. We do three locks. You can bet whatever you want on these. These are locks. They will hit. It doesn't matter. Bet your house. Bet your bet everything that you got. These are locks. These will hit. And then we do three 99% guarantees. We still love these picks. We still love these bets. You can still, you know, bet pretty heavily on these. But we can see maybe, potentially, possibly one small thing that kind of derails potentially, possibly the bet, and we lose. So, last week, we didn't do our, our kind of classic three locks, three 99% guarantees. A lot of COVID news last week, so we did a pre-game live pick show where we took four games at the kind of 12th, uh, kind of the last hour mark. We go live noon Eastern on Sunday, and we know games kick off at 1 o'clock. So, we had four game day picks yes, uh, last week. Bucks minus 11 and a half over the Panthers. Y'all already know how that one went. Uh, we hit. They win by 26. Uh, then we took the Texans plus 13 and a half. Y'all were actively betting it down to Texans plus 12 and a half as we were talking. And it didn't matter with that one point value loss because they win by 12 anyway. Then we took the Patriots minus one, and that was the one that we lost on. They lose by 12. The Bills definitely showed up. We were wrong. And then we took the Dolphins minus three. They win by 17. Bingo, bango. So on game day, folks, we read the entire week correctly except that Patriots pick, um, and we went three of four officially. So we're ready to go six for six this week. Uh, because we're feeling good about betting this early on in the week. The value is there, and uh, there's not as many. There's still a little bit, but there's not as many COVID outs that we have to kind of, all right, we have to wait. Is he going to clear? Is he not? We have to wait till game day, all that. There's not that many this week. So we feel confident giving you the picks on Friday, folks. So here we go. Let's start with our locks, folks. Here we go. Three picks in our lock section coming up. First pick in our lock section, folks. And once again, folks, come on. Stop disrespecting this team. Vegas, man, oh, man. We are taking the Dolphins plus three and a half. I love that over half a point hook here. So if the Tex Titans do win, I think this game is going to be close. I'm not here this week. This week, I'm not. The last six weeks we have been. But this week, I'm not saying, hey, the Dolphins are going to blow out the Titans. I still think this is going to be a close game. This Titans defense is still solid. It's a solid, winnable defense here. And Ryan Tannehill can make some plays here and there offensively. But I think the bulk of the game is going to come down to that narrative of the Dolphins defense smothering Ryan Tannehill because we know Ryan Tannehill cannot get it done himself. So overall, I do think this is going to be a close game. That's why I love three and a half here because I could definitely see the this being a three-point win either way. So I get that extra half a point hook for the Dolphins. That's exactly it. If this was Dolphins only plus three, this would not be a lock. This would definitely be a 99% guarantee. But that half a point hook is everything, and it's everything this week. I do think the Dolphins win outright here, so I don't even think we'll have to worry about that half a point. But this Dolphins defense will be able to smother the Titans, a kind of uh, closer, lower scoring game overall with the Dolphins on the road, but Tua gets it done. Tua is a winner, and that is one of the biggest narratives that's not being talked about in the mainstream media, folks, is Tua winning games. You can call him, if y'all want to call him trash, there's nothing I can do to change your opinion. We've tr we've tried to do that. We've, we've talked about Tua uh, for the last six weeks of how great he is showing you, hey, this is what he's doing, but y'all are still not either not believing it or just being hard-headed or just listening to the media or just, you know, trying to be trolls which is oh i guess okay i see y'all do that all the time i don't get into that but i love what this dolphins team is is overall and tua is just a straight up winner jalen waddle getting it done running back by committee now that we've got three here all getting it done this dolphins team has been working on the wildcat a little bit last week so expect them to incorporate that maybe a little bit more a tad bit more over the titans and that could catch them off guard if they're not actively game planning defensively for that so i think everything is lining up dolphins just got into the playoffs 
playoffs last week. They need to kind of win out to definitely keep that spot. And I know Brian Flores definitely wants to be in the playoffs this season, given on how they started early on in the season, 1-7. and seven. So, Titans offense, I'm not believing in Ryan Tannehill over this fantastic top three defense in the league that is this Dolphins defense. And we're still trying to come up with the nickname, folks. We are still having trouble. We've got the Walk of Fame defense with the Cowboys and the provocateurs of the uh, Patriots defense, but we can't come up with the cool, clever name of this Dolphins defense. Let me give, give me 10 seconds here. Let me play it out. Dolphins, meh, meh. You know, they squeak. Dolphins, defense, defense, fins, defense. Brian Flores, what do we got? What do we got? Dolphins, animal, mammal, water, marine life, defense, defense. We get pick sixes. We get uh, the fin sixes. I don't really like that. Uh, sacking. What can I do with the fins and the flippers? And I don't know, folks. It's not coming to me. I've been struggling, folks. I've been struggling. So, if you can come up with the great Dolphins defense name, let me know, cause I'm struggling here, folks. The fins, the the. See, it's not coming. It's not coming to me. So Dolphins plus three and a half, first lock of the week, folks. We don't know a nickname, but we know value, and the Dolphins plus three and a half is fantastic value. Alrighty, second pick in our locks, and uh, once again, <laughs> once again, once again, we only have to swallow less than a touchdown here. Of course, we're taking this. What are you, crazy? Saints minus six and a half over the Panthers. Stop batting the Panthers, and I swear to goodness, if I start to see this line drop to six, five and a half, five, or if I see the spread, or if I see the odds at Saints minus six and a half be like plus one touchdown. 10 plus 115 showing me that y'all are actively betting the Panthers. I may just lose it this week. This may be the week y'all push me over the edge of truly scolding y'all of taking the Panthers and betting on them. Stop betting on Cam Newton. He is absolute trash. Matt Rule is absolute trash. Everybody on Twitter, we said it earlier this show, everybody on Twitter is uh, hashtagging Rule out and kind of telling us, hey, he should be fired and that's exactly yet. Saints not rocking with Ian Book, obviously fantastic. Getting Taysom Hill back, rocking with him. Saints at home trying to get into the playoffs. Panthers fighting for nothing, and we know this Saints team defensively steps it up against division opponents. We just saw them shut down Tom Brady, and if they can shut down Tom Brady, they should be able to uh, shut down Cam Newton pretty easily. You hold Tom Brady to zero points, then you should be able to hold the Panthers to like negative 20 points. I don't know how that's possible, but watch this game to find out how a team can actively score negative points because it's coming this week. Saints minus six and a half. Saints at home. They win by a touchdown. Bingo, bango. That's what we're looking at here, folks. And this Panthers team is nothing good. I'm sure Sam Darnold plays a lot here. But once again, that's not good either. So either way, whoever's playing quarterback, it's still Matt Rule at the helm. And we know how that goes. So Saints getting blown out on national Monday night television. Sean Payton's Eagles at stake here. Saints at home. Everything's lining up for another great week of of cashing in on our sponsor of betting against the Carolina Panthers. Once again, Carolina Panthers, thank you for funding Takes by Fans. Thank you for all that you have done for the show over the last six weeks. We truly appreciate it, and Takes by Fans would not be where it is today without the Carolina Panthers. We thank you for your generosity of supporting uh, small creators here. Thank you, Carolina. And we will be cashing in again on our sponsors, Saints minus six and a half. Lock it in. Lock it in and lock it up. I want this value to be driven to Saints minus 20 by game day. Do you understand me, folks? Bet it up to Saints minus 20 and uh, we will have it all a great week. All right, last game in our lock section, folks. Well, we read the articles. We read the stories about how great this Rams team is. And damn, 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 y'all got out a little bit ahead of me. We just lost a half a point value over the last hour. Damn, y'all. But I respect y'all because y'all are making the right play. So I guess we can all win. I'll eat a little less value so y'all can have the better value. That's how generous I am here, folks. Rams minus five. We had it at Rams minus four when I was making these official picks in our uh, you know prep of the show today. But the Rams minus five. Okay, we're going to lock it in at the five. 
but I'm still liking it here. We just saw Lamar Jackson, folks. He's not going to be, if he does go, he's going to be super limited, super ho hobbled, and Aaron Donald is going to be licking his chops at getting after a wobbly, hobbling Lamar Jackson, not at 100% strength. Now, if Tyler Huntley is playing, he does look good, but remember how rookie quarterbacks have been playing, or not rookie, but backup quarterbacks have been playing this season. Game one, they can come out and win it. We've seen it. The Cowboys quarterback has done it. Mike White, the Jets quarterback. Game number one, looking pretty good. Being like, whoa, where'd this dude come from? Maybe he can play. Maybe he can even compete for a starting job. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then they rock with the same quarterback next week, and they lose. They get blown out. They get embarrassed. And then they're like, okay, this is why they're backup quarterbacks, because the opposing team doesn't have tape on them. They don't know what they do well. Well, and then some quarterbacks get a game three, some don't. Mike White didn't really get that third game under his belt. They go with Joe Flacco. But that third game with um, Colt McCoy of the Cardinals, he wins game one. He gets blown out game two. Game three, he gets the win. So game three is truly the deciding factor. Game one is always usually good for backup quarterbacks this season. Game number two is usually a blowout. And game number three is truly, all right, are they good? Are they bad? We get to see it here. Tyler Huntley would be on. His second game, which is the bad game. He was good last week, almost won the game, unfortunate. Couldn't get it done in the clutch. And then this game against the Rams, that would be his number two garbage game. Rams. I mean, fantastic. Over the last couple weeks, one of the best teams, you could say, I don't want to say the best team in the NFC, just because what the Packers have been doing, very, very close overall in the NFC, Rams-Packers. Uh, but this Rams team, definitely one of the top teams in the NFC, uh, consistent, getting it done, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Vikings last week, but you know that's just how Vikings games go. So once again, we didn't penalize the Rams for a close game last week. They're still sticking with Sony Michelle, which is fantastic. We read that article earlier today, which we absolutely love, and Matthew Stafford is pleasing OBJ. Uh, Matthew Stafford still targeting Cooper Cup 12 plus times a game, and Cooper Cup is still running for over 100 yards, receiving over for 100 yards, getting it done, touchdown scoring, moving the ball deep down the field. So this Rams offense is fantastic. This Rams defense will obliterate any quarterback that they put out there. Hobbled. Lamar Jackson, or Game 2, Tyler Huntley, which is the trash game. So we'll swallow the five here for the Rams. I think it's great value. They win by at least a touchdown, and the Rams are kind of officially a little eliminated from the playoffs with this loss tonight, or this weekend. So Rams minus five. All right, these are our three locks that we're rocking with this week. Dolphins plus three and a half points. Saints minus six and a half. And the Rams minus five. Feeling fantastic. Oh, my goodness. Odds are plus 581. I put 100 bucks on this. You win 681, man. Holy moly, fantastic. All righty, now let's shift gears to our 99% guarantee. Still feeling very, very good, but there is maybe one thing that we could potentially see going wrong. So we'll talk about those through. So here we go. First pick in our 99% guarantees. We are going back to Texans plus 12. Now, we're not, let me preface it by saying this. I'm not taking the Texans with the points this week because of Davis Mills alone. I'm doing it a little bit more so of Trey Lance being the starting quarterback this week for the 49ers. If it was like 49ers, if it was like Texans only getting like six or seven, I would stay away from it. But I think this is a little bit too high for Trey Lance being the starter. Plus, Brandon Cooks, we just told you, coming back from COVID-19. So Davis Mills, who just had a fantastic showing with this kind of backup receivers, tier two receivers and all that, he gets his A1 tier one receiver back. So Brandon Cooks should be on par and his other receivers should be on par as well because they just got all the bulk of the three throws last week so they'll be prepared for this week 49ers trying to make the playoffs 49ers at home 49ers defense all that is very very good and why the 49ers most likely win this week but I think 12 here is a little bit too much for Trey Lance individually I'm sure he makes a mistake or two I believe Davis Mills can capitalize on mistakes off of turnovers with at least three points and I think the Texans keep it decently competitive and don't get blown out that's why it's in our 99 
99% guarantees, but I think 12 points I think is fantastic value seeing what they did last week. I don't think they ride all that momentum, but they still have that solid momentum. Davis Mills looking solid, not 100% good, but still solid, and I think it's a solid game overall. I don't think Trey Lance blows out a team his first real official start with playoff implications on the line, all that pressure where Davis Mills doesn't have pressure. He can't make the playoffs. He's most likely going to be on the team next year, maybe not the starter, but he will be at camp competing for the starting job this uh, this next season, regardless if, if he wins this game, gets blown out this game, loses this game, loses next week, wins next week, gets blown out next week. Doesn't matter. He will most likely still be on the roster. So, Lucy Goosey free Davis Mills over, hey, if I make one mistake, uh, I could cost our entire team. Me, little low rookie quarterback, can cost our entire team a playoff spot. I'll take the Texans plus the 12 here. I don't think they win, but I love the number. Maybe they lose by 10. 12 is more than 10, and we hit our bet. Texans plus 12. All righty. Next pick here. We are going Monday Night Football with Browns minus three and a half. And why we are putting this in our 99%. Well, let's tell you why we like the Browns first. Uh, we like them because the Steelers are trash. <laughs> Their offense is so gosh dang bad. Ba Big Ben cannot throw the ball to save his life. He can't sling it around. He's not good. He's hobbled. He can't move around in the pocket. Now, why this is in our 99% guarantees is because this is Big Ben's last home game and it's on Monday Night Football. So the narratives, the energy, the spirit, the football gods may, may let Big Ben kind of play with a uh, kind of fresh arm. Maybe he slings it around. Steelers still trying to fight for the playoffs, but so are the Cleveland Browns. And Kevin Stefanski is kind of, you know, co not coaching for his life here these last two weeks, but we really have to see some sort of great offensive production here. Uh, Baker Mayfield has to be on point as well this game so he can have a little bit of a better negotiation um, strategy heading into a contract, you know, off season and all that. Don't like the extra half a point hook here with the Browns minus three and a half. But overall, this Browns defense versus this Steelers offense should tell you all you need to know about betting this game. I can't rely any on the Steelers moving the ball consistently throughout the game. So I'm never going to bet on that. I'm never betting on a team that I'm actively going in and be like, well, they can't move the ball. Why would I ever bet that? It's going to be garbage to watch. It's going to be giving me, you know, uh, you know, stress and anxiety being like, well, I know this team can't move the ball so every time that they do move the ball that they better score on those drives because they're not getting back here so Browns minus three and a half division game all that Big Ben's potential last game I just have no viability in Big Ben folks just zero the, if you watch this Steelers team play you're like wow this is an NFL team this isn't the XFL this isn't you know the new league coming out um, what, what is that new league it's on Fox and I don't want to disrespect it because it's going to be football it's going to be okay to watch but uh, we need another you know uh, spring football that goes belly up midway season that we don't get the re the end of it and that's what we need all right all right but either way Browns minus three and a half Baker Kevin's fancy you've got to get back on the same page like y'all were last year we haven't really seen it at all this year it's time to step it up and get it done Monday night football division rivalry on the road we'll take the Browns minus three and a half all righty, and then our last pick in our lock section, folks, for the week. We are going Cardinals plus six and a half points. Yes, all right. This is going to be a great game. Cardinals, Cowboys, two top-tier teams in the NFC, and honestly, two Super Bowl contending teams. Uh, Cardinals, we have them in the playoff contender, but if they win this game, I would definitely move them into Super Bowl contender category. Now, why I'm taking this game, it's like, when are we going to get Cardinals plus six and a half? I have this up right here. Uh, this website put, uh, is recording all the spreads throughout this entire season. So I just want to quickly go through this to see when has there ever been a week where we get six and a half with the Cardinals, folks. I mean, this is a great team. We know they can turn it on. We know they've got the offense. Uh, is DeAndre Hopkins back? Let me double check on that. I believe he should be good to go this week. But let me double check this. Uh, injuries. Here we go. 
DeAndre Hopkins is still out. Damn, damn, damn. So that should, you know, hurt them a little bit. But still, at the end of the day, you have to be a little bit better than just your overall number one wide receiver. And that's why we're taking the Cardinals plus six and a half because this is a must. It's not a must win, but it's a must be competitive. I think we said it a little bit earlier this week. It's a must not get blown out. It's a must lose at maximum by one possession. And that one possession really only can be like three points. You have to lose by really a field goal or less for us to truly buy back into this Cardinals team that we've been selling over the last couple of weeks. So we need this Cardinals team to be good, and why we have it in the 99% guarantees, it's because we're getting a lot of great points. Now, this Cowboys team as well, you know, yes, their defense is absolutely fantastic. We don't have to tell y'all that. We show y'all every single week, Walk of Fame defense. We've named the defense. We know they're good. But Dak Prescott getting a little cocky last week saying, hey, oh, are we still in a slump? Well, it was your defense that really kind of put you in that great position offensively to score. So yes, y'all got it done, but it was really on short field riding momentum at home based on what the defense did. So I think, you know, uh, Dak Prescott getting a little bit too ahead of the gun there offensively to say, hey, our slump is officially over. Our little tumble is officially over. Um, so I, I think the Cowboys may be a little cocky this week facing the Cardinals. And the Cardinals obviously need to win and be competitive to get the bad taste out of their mouth of what they've been losing over the last couple of weeks against Super Bowl and playoff contenders. Also, you know, uh, Cardinals plus six and a half. Back to that. That's just great. That's a lot of points to give a special team. I, I think we can all agree that this Cardinals team is still one of the most talented teams all over the place with receivers and quarterback and head coach and defense and all that. So getting six and a half with any great team, I, I it's a little foolish not to take. So I quickly want to go through all the Cardinals games this season to quickly see which, uh, how many times they have gotten this many points and, uh, you know, if it's uh, because we we are not going to get this opportunity again to get a high profile team getting plus six and a half points maybe in the playoffs we will but at that point you know it changes you know value is changed in the playoffs because everything is a little bit tighter so value that would be good in the regular season is not good in the playoffs anymore but here we go let's uh, let's see if we can uh, do this quickly here let me uh, find Cardinals so we can go through all of them quickly so here we go week one Cardinals uh, they were plus two and a half. Week two, they were minus three. Week three, they were minus two and a half. Week four, they were plus four and a half. They won that game against the Rams. Uh, not quite at that six and a half value. Week five, it was a pick em. Week six, it was Cardinals my, uh, plus four and a half. Week 7, Cardinals minus 10.5. Week 8, Cardinals minus 3. Week 9, Cardinals plus 5.5 against the 49ers. Week 10, Pan, uh, Cardinals minus 6. Week 11, Cardinals plus 3.5 against the Seahawks. Is that right? Was that a real value? Is that right? Did we take that that week? Um, interesting. Uh, week 12, a bye. Week 13, minus one and a half. Week 14, M Cardinals plus two and a half. That was time it was against the Rams. That's when, you know, their decline really kind of, you know, got to the forefront. Week 16, week 15, Cardinals minus six and a half. Week 16, last week, Cardinals minus one and a half. So this is the best value they've gotten all season. And I just unfortunately cannot run away from that. I cannot not bet that this week. I'm going to take the Cardinals with the points. I think they keep it close. I know the Cowboys are a great team, but this is a must be competitive game for the Cardinals. We'll take them plus six and a half here in our 99% guarantees. Alrighty, so our three 99% guarantees. We've got Texans plus 12, Browns minus 3.5, and, and the Cardinals plus 6.5. Now, folks, there is a trap bet, folks. There is a trap bet this week. We saw it yesterday, and I was like, all right, I think that might be a little bit of a trap, and then I rested on it, and then I resaw the line that y'all bet it uh, the wrong way, proving that it is a trap bet set up by Vegas. So, the bet to stay away from this week, 
or really to bet the opposite because, you know, hey, they're showing you, hey, bet this when you should be betting this. So this is our bonus avoid the trap bet this week. And that trap game is Chiefs at Bengals. And the trap was Bengals plus five. Now, y'all have been betting the Bengals plus five. So it has come down to Bengals plus four and a half. Once again, y'all are falling for that trap set by Vegas. And we're going to go Chiefs minus four and a half of our bonus pick of the week. Now, why we call this a trap bet is because optically Joe Burrow just threw 525 yards and looked real solid while doing so. Uh, they blew out the Ravens. Everyone's talking about Joe Burrow. We just talked about the story of the Chiefs de uh, uh, defensive coordinator calling Joe Burrow a young Tom Brady can do it all. We've got the Ravens defensive coordinator after the game saying, well, let's pump the brakes on giving Joe Burrow a gold jacket. Joe Burrow's been smurfy all week long. His press conferences, he's got that little smirk, his classic Joey B smirk. Uh, you know, every time, you know, they're asking questions about the game and the 525 yard performance and all that, uh, you know, asking Joe Burrow's opinion on what the defensive coordinator for the Ravens, uh, uh, you know, was saying after the game and Joe Burrow saying like, Hey, it was an unnecessary comment and getting his kind of, you know, digs in throughout the media sessions out this week, folks. I mean, just look it up. Joe Burrow, he gets this little kind of smirk, a smirk at the end. Um, I'm not blaming him for the smirk. Hey, be smirky, be smurfy. I've got no problem problem with it but this all plays into the overall optics of what Vegas is putting out there Bengals plus five we did not even say that as the prediction folks we said it should have been Chiefs minus one Bengals plus one that's really what we thought it would but giving such great value hey look at this Bengals at home Bengals plus five points everybody is jumping on that and I for a second thought that was great value I was kind of ready to jump on that but then I was thinking about Vegas and we know Vegas is isn't respectful like this giving the Bengals plus five points what are you crazy so I'm saying it's a trap bet. Joe Burrow being a little too smurfy out here. This Chief, Chiefs defense is not like the Ravens defense. And once again, we watched Joe Burrow's performance in our film study this Wednesday, folks, this week. And, you know, it was a great performance. We're not going to take anything away from that performance. But once again, it was really everything wide open, that Ravens defense. I don't know what the hell they were doing. You know, two jump balls to T. Higgins that he came down with. And, you know, Joe Burrow put it decently on the money, but it was T. Higgins, you know, going up and catching the ball going up and high pointing the ball all the other throws were really wide open because the Ravens defense wasn't that good and I'm not taking anything away from the performance if the perform if it's so easy to throw 525 yards everybody would be doing it every single week folks so don't give me oh you know Joe Burrow faced the trash team or anything like that well you know the Chargers just faced the Texans in loss so what are we talking about it's any given Sunday every performance is a great performance if you throw 525 yards regardless of who you're doing it against so I'm not taking anything away from Joe Burrow's performance but I we have to get in the the betting mindset folks talking sports and a betting mindset are two totally different mindsets we have our finger on the pulse here of the NFL and the NBA and we're not we're not betting 100% and nobody does it's so hard it's so drastically different talking sports and then talking betting sports it's totally different here but I think we do a damn good job of getting both right honestly so Chiefs minus four and a half here, folks, I think is the better play. But taking the Bengals plus five, plus four and a half, I think is a little bit of a trap bet. This Chiefs defense is way better than the Ravens, uh, you know, Ravens defense. And we have not seen this Bengals team be consistent. Didn't we just talk about it earlier this week on the show, folks? Let me get it up here. They go like two losses to, or two wins and then two losses and two wins and then two losses. Um... Uh, Cincinnati, let me get this up here. Um, let me double check this. Uh, almost positive, but I def definitely, let's just double check the numbers. No reason not to double check here. Um, I'm almost certain it was the Bengals that we were talking about it. So here we go. This is what they've been doing. I believe it's ever since week six here in the NFL. 
So here we go. Since week six, win-win, loss-loss, win-win, loss-loss, win-win. Two losses coming up. This is not a greatly consistent Bengals team. They show these great glimpses of offense in the great glimpses of defense, but then they still actively do lose some games in the turnovers, you know, rear their head and all that. So Chiefs defense, Chiefs being kind of big underdog or uh, big favorites in this game. Uh, but with that performance of Joe Burrow, I think going with the number of Chiefs minus four and a half and swallowing those points is the better play overall. We'll see if this Bengals team can be consistent for a third week in a row and get a third win in a row, breaking their trending cycle that we've been seeing. But at the end of the day, it's Chiefs, it's Andy Reid, it's Patrick Mahomes trying to lock up that number one seed in the AFC and all that. I'm going to take the Chiefs minus four and a half, I believe. The Bengals with the points this week is a trap bet, folks. Don't fall for the trap. Chiefs minus four and a half is our trap avoiding bonus bet of the week. All right, so to recap all of our bets this week, all of our official picks, we've got Dolphins plus three and a half, Saints minus six and a half, Ravens, uh, Rams minus four. Chiefs minus four and a half, Texans plus 12, Browns minus three and a half, and the Cardinals plus six and a half points this week, folks. Feeling good, feeling good, feeling good. 